Hey everybody, this is Dan Wade here with my World Series picks on the newly redesigned Twins MVB. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, picking a World Series winner and picking the best team in baseball aren't always the same thing. Uh, you can look at the 2010 Giants or the 05 White Sox to know that it's about getting hot at the right time and staying hot through the playoffs. Uh, I think very few people would have said last year that the Giants were the best team in baseball, but they've got rings and flags fly forever. So, on the one hand... I feel like I'm picking more of the best teams than the World Series winner, but at this point it's hard to say who's going to get hot. It's impossible to know, otherwise I wouldn't be doing a video blog. I'd be a very rich man living in a comp suite in Vegas. So, um, initially I feel like the Phillies are going to be tough to beat in the National League, and the Red Sox look like a consensus pick in the American League. And the Red Sox probably beat the beat the Phillies in the World Series. But that's not actually my pick. The more I thought about it, the more this year is tougher than almost any other year I've made World Series picks. Um, the level of parity in baseball has gotten to a point where divisions that used to be just outright wins for teams like the Yankees or uh, the Diamondbacks in 2001 if you want to go back that far, are now two to three teams deep, and that's really tough. And this gets into the other thing I wanted to cover in this video. So I spent last night, Tuesday night, at an event with uh, Blogs with Balls and the Bloomberg Sports people, which was absolutely fantastic, just a, a really top-class event. Uh, their fantasy sports offering I haven't played around with enough, so you'll hear me plug it, I'm sure, a few more times, but I, I don't want to talk about it too much until I've had a chance to play with it. But they showed us the pro product, the, the program... Uh, data set, I suppose is a good way to put it, that they sell the teams. Um, and it's a really, really amazing product. It has all the data you could ever want. The coolest thing I saw on it was pitch chaining. Um, the exemplar was Dan Heron. So if Dan Heron throws a cut fastball in his first pitch, what's his second pitch, what's his third pitch most likely going to be? Um, home run overlays on new parks. Uh, lots of just really incredible stuff. Uh, Rick Peterson, former pitching coach for the A's, was there gave some incredibly interesting data on uh, the importance of getting to two strikes and how little a first pitch strike actually matters. Um, but the interesting thing they pointed out was that 18 of the 30 teams use this product. Um, and that's just befuddling to me in a certain way because with, with the level of talent being so similar among the teams, you don't have to look any further than your home park in the AL Central. Who's going to win the AL Central? The Twins? Reigning champions still have a very good shot. The White Sox probably look like the best team on paper. The Tigers with a very plus top end of the pitching staff and an offense that's going to produce a lot of runs. One of those teams isn't going to make the playoffs, even if one grabs the wild card from whoever is going to finish second in the AL East. It's, the idea that a product is out there that is going to help so much with decision making that almost half the teams aren't using puzzles me a little bit. And I think we're going to start seeing teams who use inventive techniques like the Bloomberg Terminal, not necessarily exactly that, be at a bigger advantage because they just have more data. Um, I'm not saying that teams that don't use this are definitely not going to win their division, so find out who is and isn't using it and bet against them. You know, it, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation like that, but the idea that something is out there that could give you such a wealth of information that you wouldn't be using. Um, honestly, it, it's if I were an owner and I found out my team wasn't using this, I would be very frustrated. I really want some answers why. Um, which gets to my picks. Um, I like the Phillies fine in the East, in the NL East, and I can see why a lot of teams are picking them. Their pitching staff is absolutely dominant. But are you dead sure that the Braves aren't going to be able to beat them out? I think the Braves are going to be really tough this year. And winning off of a wild card track is probably going to be a little bit more difficult for the Phillies. Um, that said, I think they probably still make the second or third round. I, I want to pick the Phillies, and I don't want to pick the Phillies. I like the Brewers a lot, but a little bit like the Phillies, if their offense falters, they're really going to be hosed. Um, at the end of the day, I think my NL pick is going to be the Brewers. As you can see, I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it was the Phillies. Would surprise me if it was anyone out of the NL West. Um, the Rockies look good this year. I still think they're a year away. The West, as in the American League, is going to be pretty much a dead zone. Uh, as far as the American League is concerned, 
Uh, I'm actually going to stick with the Red Sox, despite the fact that the Yankees look like obviously going to be challenging competition. Uh, the AL East as a whole improved a lot this offseason. But I look at the Red Sox, I see a pitching staff that still has some questions, but an offense that's going to win you some games, a pitching staff that's going to win you some games. And really, teams that get consistently great pitching outputs and consistently great offensive outputs are non-existent. So uh, having, having two halves that can pick up the slack if the other falters is pretty much the the sort of best you can hope for. Um, I know this isn't technically included in the video, but my AL Central pick is the White Sox um, for health reasons. I think they're going to be able to keep their core healthier than the Twins and Tigers are going to be able to. Um, so this is out there for posterity. If in September they've lost Paul Canerco for the entire season, Adam Dunn is dead, and Jake Peavy is part of his rehab is actually on fire, uh, you can throw this in my face. But I think the White Sox are the best team on paper, and I think they're going to keep their talent on the field the best. So, to summarize, White Sox winning the AL Central. My half-hearted World Series picks are the Red Sox, who I'm much more confident in, and the Brewers, who I'm less confident in but think they'll be there at the end of the day. I think they can get hot, and as we covered already, that's the important thing in the playoffs. So thanks for stopping by, and we hope you enjoy the site redesign.